When the spirit of a nation long suppressed arises in revolt, it is to assert a people's right to freedom, a flashpoint which marks the beginning of a national movement. Since earliest times, India was a country open to all cultures. And yet throughout the ages, she has maintained her essential identity and basic unity. As Jawaharlal Nehru has said, the past of India, with all its cultural variety and greatness, was a common heritage of all the Indian people, Hindu, Muslim, Sikh, Christian and others. It was in this spirit of tolerance that early in the 17th century, the British East India Company received permission from the Mughal Emperor to start a factory at Surat. By 1690, the British had gained a number of footholds in India and their business had prospered because, as Brooke Adams puts it, possibly since the world began, no investment has ever yielded the profit reaped from Indian plunder. From these bridgeheads, the British started to spread inland through military conquests. And by the middle of the 19th century, they had occupied nearly three-fifths of India. The British compelled the rulers of many Indian states to conclude unequal treaties and made the rulers ineffective. They introduced the insidious doctrine of lapse. Whenever a ruler died without leaving a direct heir, the state was annexed by the British. By a series of annexations, they took over states such as Satara, Jhansi, Nagpur, and many more. Along with political expansion, there was legalized exploitation of the Indian masses, and the word loot became part of the English language. Soon, Indian industries were destroyed. The craftsmen whose products once adorned the courts of Rome and Pompeii, lost their means of livelihood. As Jawaharlal Nehru noted, British policy deliberately disintegrated the whole economic and structural basis of Indian society. Artisans and craftsmen were forced back to the villages. And even there, in the words of Lord Bentinck, the misery hardly finds a parallel in the history of commerce the bones of the cotton weavers were bleaching the plains of India. At such a moment in history, the people of India were in turmoil and decided to fight the British. The British were not only enslaving the people of India, but were a threat to the cultural and religious life of her people. The Chapati, was used as a means of secret communication to spread the message of simmering discontent and to prepare the people for a revolution. At this time, Nana Sahib of Bithur was traveling to various capitals to seek help in organizing a united front against the British. In 1857, the British introduced cartridges greased with animal fat. These had to be bitten before loading the gunpowder. Since the sepoys were not told what type of fat it was, many refused to accept the cartridges on religious grounds. When the 19th Regiment stationed at Barrackpore near Calcutta refused to accept the cartridges, the unit was disbanded. The sepoys resented the high-handedness of the British authorities. According to British Army records, on the 29th of March, 1857, Mangal Pandey, a sepoy with seven years' service in the 34th Regiment, moved up and down near the quarter guard and asked his comrades to defy the British. A British sergeant major rushed to the scene. He ordered Mangal Pandey to stop and asked Ishwari Pandey, an officer on duty, to arrest him. They ignored him. 
मंगल पांडे सेड दिस इज द टाइम टू स्ट्राइक हम लोग अब पीछे नहीं हट सकते निकलो बाहर और इनको निकाले निकलो भाइयों हमारे साथ इनको निकालने के लिए अ ब्रिटिश लेफ्टिनेंट चार्ज फॉरवर्ड ऑन इज होर्स मंगल पांडे शर्त द होर्स फ्रॉम अंडर द ऑफिसर The colonel of the regiment ordered Mangal Pandey to be arrested. The soldiers disobeyed him. Pandey turned his gun on himself and fired. He was wounded. Mangal Pandey was arrested. After a court martial, he was hanged. The news of Mangal Pandey's martyrdom traveled swiftly to various parts of the country. At Meerut, 85 out of 90 sawars of the 3rd Cavalry refused to accept the greased cartridges they were disarmed and sent to prison the indian soldiers were furious at this insult to their comrades on sunday the 10th of may british soldiers and officers were attending church sepoys of the 3rd cavalry seized weapons from guard rooms and stormed the jail to release their comrades they attacked their british officers and burnt their houses the sepoys of the 14th and 20th regiment joined them the revolutionaries then marched to delhi on the way a large number of villagers joined them they reached the red fort on the 11th of may 1857 The last of the Mughal kings, Bahadur Shah Zafar, was proclaimed emperor of India. मेरे हिंदू और मुसलमान भाइयों, आज हमने जो एक दूसरे का हाथ थामा है, वो हमारे फर्ज का तकाजा है. मेरी दिली ख्वाहिश है कि फिरंगियों को हिंदुस्तान से बाहर निकाल दिया जाए. चाहे इसके लिए हमें कितनी ही कीमत क्यों ना अदा करनी पड़े. ये बात न भूलो कि परवर दिगार की नेमतों में सबसे बड़ी नेमत आजादी है आजादी ऑन हियरिंग दिस कॉल मोस्ट सिपॉइस फ्रॉम मीरठ एंड अदर प्लेसेस फ्लक टू दिल्ली द ऑक्यूपेशन ऑफ दिल्ली बाय इंडियन सोल्जर्स वाज अ ट्रिमेंडस ब्लो टू ब्रिटिश प्रेस्टीज द न्यूज ऑफ द अपराइजिंग स्प्रेड लाइक वाइल्ड फायर द ब्रिटिश एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन वॉज वर्चुअली पैरालाइज in their hearts the people of india had never accepted british domination and indian soldiers had revolted against them 12 times even before 1857 the british authorities issued orders that anyone connected with the revolt was to be treated as a convict and deported to the andamans for life many were given capital punishment some were hanged some shot by musketry and many more tied to guns and blown away these are the ruins of the residency in lucknow the source of british power after they deposed wajid ali shah the nawab of awadh in 1856 the residency was completely destroyed during an 8 month long siege laid by indian troops on the 29th of june the indian soldiers advancing onto lucknow defeated the british troops at chinhat a few miles outside lucknow british forces under sir henry lawrence retreated to the residency indian soldiers laid siege to the residency and requested begum hazrat mahal the wife of the deposed king to lead them The Begum fought alongside the Sepoys without regard to her personal safety. Several British attempts at relieving the hard-pressed residency were defeated. The British suffered heavy losses. Sir Henry Lawrence was killed during one of the attacks. The British finally succeeded in recapturing Lucknow in March of 1858. Indian soldiers revolted at Danapur. 
Under the leadership of Kumar Singh of Jagdishpur, they occupied Ara. Kumar Singh set up his own administrative machinery in this building. When heavily armed British forces attacked his position, the Indian soldiers put up a valiant fight before retreating. Kumar Singh thereafter defeated Colonel Milman's troops and occupied Azamgarh. On the 21st of May, the 37th Native Infantry revolted in Banaras. The unit was disbanded on the 4th of June. At Allahabad, Malvi Liakatali, a local schoolmaster, proclaimed himself the governor of the city at the instance of the people. Colonel Neal's regiment stormed Banaras and Allahabad and carried out indiscriminate shooting and hanging of Indian freedom fighters without regard to their age or sex. Within a few days, life was completely paralyzed in the crowded cities and surrounding villages. It is said that from every tree, bodies of Indian patriots were hanging and every village within the reach of Colonel Neal was up in smoke. At Kanpur, the 1st and 56th Native Infantry took up arms against the British. They occupied the Treasury on the 4th of June. They called on Nana Sahib of Bitur, who was camping at Nawab Ganj, to lead them in their battle against the British. The Indian troops advanced onto Kanpur under the leadership of Nana Saheb and his general, Tati Tope. The British forces withdrew to an entrenchment. Nana's forces laid a siege which lasted for 20 days. On the 25th of June, Nana Saheb's advisor, Azimullah Khan, carried a letter to the besieged British forces promising safe passage to Allahabad if they surrendered. Wheeler's forces surrendered the next day. The British soldiers and their families embarked onto 40 boats. When the Indian boatmen left the boats to come ashore, due to a misunderstanding, some Englishmen opened fire on them. This led to the grim tragedy of the destruction of all the boats. A British column under Henry Havelock attacked Kanpur. Nana Saheb marched out with nearly 5,000 men and set up a strong defensive position at Fatehgarh on the Grand Trunk Road near Kanpur. When Havelock reoccupied Kanpur, Tati Atope, one of the ablest generals of the War of Independence, did not take the defeat lying down. He raised troops in Gwalior and marched onto Kanpur on the 28th of November and again conquered the city. After beating back several counter-attacks, Tatya Tope retreated to Kalpi on the 6th of December. Delhi remained free for several days. A British column from Meerut was sent to reoccupy the capital on the 5th of June. Indian soldiers, under the command of General Bakht Khan, fought them on the banks of the Hindan River. After two days of fierce fighting, the Indian sepoys retreated to a stronger defensive position at Badliki Sarai, a few miles outside Delhi. The British suffered heavy losses. There was a long stalemate. The British had the advantage of telegraphic communications, which ensured speedy movement of their troops. They were even able to get reinforcements from Britain. Massive reinforcements arrived from Punjab and other areas. The British troops launched a full-scale attack on Delhi on September the 14th. The Indian troops fought so bravely that the commander-in-chief of the British army General Sir James Outram said, there never was a bolder feat of arms. The battle continued for seven long days. 
Finally, the British blasted the Kashmiri gate with heavy artillery fire. After fighting for every house in every street, the British finally occupied the city on the 21st of September and let loose a reign of terror. When Major Hudson promised to spare the lives of his family, Bahadur Shah Zafar, who had taken shelter in Humayun's tomb, surrendered. Hudson arrested two of his sons and one grandson and personally shot them dead without a qualm. When Hudson asked the tortured Shahanshah, have you finished wiping the tears from your eyes? Zafar replied, Hudson, emperors do not weep. Bahadur Shah Zafar was exiled to Rangoon. He spent his last days praying for the freedom of his country. Before his death, the poet in him cried out, Indian troops at Jhansi revolted on the 5th of June, 1857. At the people's request, Rani Lakshmi Bai of Jhansi assumed the responsibility of leading them. The Rani wrote to various rulers to unite in the fight against the foreigners. This is the fort at Jhansi made famous by deeds of extreme courage. The stones of its walls and ramparts are impregnated with the blood of countless men and women who made the supreme sacrifice for the country's freedom. In March of 1858, British troops under General Hugh Rose attacked Jhansi. Under the inspiring leadership of Rani Lakshmi Bai, her troops offered gallant resistance. These guns under the command of Ghosh Khan never ceased firing. Even women were working on batteries and distributing ammunition. On the 4th of April 1858, when the situation became critical, the soldiers pleaded with Rani Lakshmi Bai to leave Jhansi. She left through this gate and joined the troops of Tatia Tope, the Nawab of Banda, Rao Saheb and others at Kalpi. The British attack on the Indian positions at Kalpi led to perhaps the fiercest battle in the fight for independence. Indian troops inflicted heavy casualties on the attacking forces. The Rani of Jhansi and Tatia Tope showed exceptional qualities of leadership. When their resources were exhausted, the Indian forces withdrew from the scene and in a brilliant move occupied the Gwalior fort. The Sindhya's forces joined Tatia Tope and Rani Lakshmi Bai. The ruler fled to Agra. When the British forces advanced towards the city, the Rani of Jhansi boldly confronted them at Kota Kisarai. Rani Lakshmi Bai died fighting for the freedom of our country on the 17th of June, 1858. General Hugh Rose paid her a rich tribute by calling her the best and bravest military leader of the rebels. Tatia Tope continued his fight against the British for several more months in guerrilla warfare. Finally, the deposed ruler of Narwar, Man Singh, who pretended to be a friend of Tatia, betrayed him. On April the 15th, 1859, Tatia Tope was tried by court-martial in this building at Shivpuri in the present-day Madhya Pradesh. On the 18th of April, he was hanged. A sad end to a brave life. In spite of the suffering and sacrifice of tens of thousands of men and women, the first war of independence did not succeed because of lack of organization and coordination and because many Indian rulers helped the British for personal gain. Nevertheless, it was a war in which all religious barriers were overcome. A war which was to inspire generations of freedom fighters and martyrs who made it possible for us to walk as free Indians today.